Namaste. I'm going to rant about something that I saw on YouTube today. I did a search for meditation on Brahman, and look what popped up. About a million videos on how to meditate on Brahman. There's only one problem. Meditation on Brahman is impossible. It is ontologically impossible. Why is that? Because meditation means to focus on an object, maintain that focus, you know, for some time until it changes the state of your consciousness. So the Upanishads are full of instructions on, like, meditate on Brahman as air, prana. Meditate on Brahman as the deity, Vishnu or Shiva or Devi. Meditate on Brahman as space, akash. Meditate on Brahman as intelligence, as life, as consciousness, etc., etc., etc. Now, this is the only possible way to meditate on Brahman. In other words, indirectly. Because Brahman itself is imperceptible. Why is it imperceptible? Because we are Brahman and we are the perceivers. We are the knowers. We are the witness. Isn't it? And everything else, things that pop up in consciousness are simply objects. The mind, <clears throat> the body, the intelligence, even consciousness is an object because it can be perceived. Brahman is never perceived, therefore it's never the object of anything, including any instrument of knowledge that's given in the scriptures. So, for example, meditation. <laughs> meditation is an instrument of knowledge. Why? Because prolonged, profound concentration of the mind is itself a revelation and leads to exposing deep hidden knowledge if only about oneself, it's still very useful. And of course, there's much more to it than that. <laughs> but just to give an easy to understand example, if you meditate on your heart, now what is in the heart? I mean, besides the physical organ, the pumping the blood and all of that, there is a center of consciousness in the heart, which deals mainly with emotion. That's the chakra, the heart chakra, the one, two, three, fourth chakra. So in this heart are all kinds of desires. Why? Because the heart is the seat of life energy and intelligence. And intelligence, vijnana, vijnana maya kosha. Intelligence is that which fabricates desire. Yes, it's intelligence in ignorance. So, okay, at some point we get the idea, or the desire actually, to be enlightened, to get the final knowledge, the ultimate truth. Then what happens? All the other desires in the heart gradually become merged into that one because that Desire is the most in harmony with the purpose of the universe itself. So as soon as you begin to cultivate this desire to know the absolute truth, to know the Brahman, the ultimate, huh? whether you call it Brahman or you call it something else, doesn't matter. It's the intention that makes the difference. Because if the intention, if that particular intention is prolonged long enough for the universe to like notice it. Uh, may take some time, you know. But when it does, it reciprocates immediately. 
And I can't describe this reciprocation because, of course, it's beyond all power of words because it's infinite, transcendental, multi-whatever, dimensional, cosmic, whoop you do There's no words, okay? So people give it a name for the sake of convenience. Brahman, Shiva, Yahweh, Tao. It can have any name. doesn't matter. <laughs> Ubik, huh? The science fiction writer, what was his name? Wrote a whole novel about the universal presence in everything. And it calls Ubik, who is titled Ubik, because that's short for ubiquitous. So Ubik or Ubik is another name for the same universal presence. And if you meditate on that, or with the intention of realizing that, for long enough, you get help. You'll get reciprocation. You'll get new knowledge that could never be discovered, could never be exposed in any way, including by studying the scriptures. So the practice is, you know, inescapably welded to the philosophy. And the practice begins from religious rituals, then it goes to bhakti, devotion, then it goes to meditation. Now, what are you going to meditate on or about? Huh? The Upanishads say meditate on Brahman as air or as the sun or as fire or as consciousness or whatever. Any object, it doesn't matter what the object is. Al Om is another one. So if you meditate on this without a break for a long time, years, huh, something will happen. I was just reading in the Vedanta Sutra, first pada of the third chapter. Right in the beginning, it says, all the meditations given in the scriptures lead to the identical same result, which is realization of Brahman, realization of the self, Aham Brahmasmi, huh? and realization of others as the self, Tattva Masi. It's beautiful. So why would anybody give this up for something that's impossible? Huh? It's impossible to be happy in the material world because all the bodies are temporary. Duh. If death is waiting in the wings, how can you be happy? So if you transfer your existence to the plane of consciousness, that's a great improvement because in that realm, there's no birth and death. No changing conditions. Everything is eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. I mean, serious bliss. Because if there's no more death, now you can do projects that take more than one life, for example. I mean, that's just a very small example of what you can do once you attain that level. And that doesn't mean that the other levels go away. You can still take bodies. In fact, Vedanta Sutra says you can take multiple bodies. You can be one, two, eight, 64, 108. So you can accomplish pretty much whatever you want to do over even a long span of time simply by persisting and inhabiting these multiple different bodies as appropriate, as your karma drives you, if nothing else. But soon you'll develop powers beyond that. You know, the intention is the thing. If your intention is to realize Brahman, then no matter what means you take, no matter what deity you worship, no matter what mantra you chant, no matter what meditation you do, you're going to get there sooner or later. Simply persist. That's the real secret. Now, these guys who run various kinds of online businesses, you know, they can't tell you this. Because if you heard this and you actually got it, 
You wouldn't need them and their high-priced seminars and their expensive books and, you know, their Patreon donations and all of this. You know, this is just to maintain the infrastructure, to maintain the business. They're living in the Western world. Everything is very expensive. They have some big buildings, you know, whatever it is. They have to collect money and they have to collect it from you, <laughs> the audience, the viewers. So they give you an impossible task. Meditate on Brahman. Well, where is Brahman? Oh, uh, duh. How do I see Brahman? Well, you don't read the scriptures. It says clearly that Brahman is imperceptible. And in my experience, even for example, when I got Shakti Prat from directly from Shakti, I couldn't see her. I could only feel her as a presence, an energetic presence. Wow, what a vibe. <laughs> so this is the reality. See, as opposed to the material presence, which is only temporary, the presence based on consciousness and based on energy can last you at least as long as the duration of the universe, whatever that's going to be, you know, billions and billions of years. So there are many planes and there are many games that are way beyond this whole earthly thing, you know, and which are delightful to learn about delightful to pursue, delightful to realize, and delightful to make a part of you, you know? And all of these can be reached by meditation with Brahman as the superimposition. See? Meditating on Brahman as air, or as the sun, or as mind, or as consciousness, all these are superimpositions. The idea is that by holding whatever you're superimposing and Brahman in alignment, this is called positioning. And it's a well-known factor in advertising. You know, you put your car uh, on a expensive looking set with, you know, a, a glitzy model. And this is supposed to be attractive. This is supposed to be, you know, this uh, stimulates something in the subconscious or whatever. I don't know what they think. Anyway, <laughs> it's positioning and it's a super imposition. You know, you're going to buy the car. You're not going to buy the girl, right? <laughs> in the same way, you're not going to realize prana. You're going to realize Brahman through prana. It's positioning. Prana comes before and Brahman is in the background. And just the fact that Brahman is there at all after prolonged concentration on prana or whatever deity, whatever symbol, whatever metaphor you use, you will reach the self, Atman, Brahman. So actually you are already the self. You are already Brahman. You have always been Brahman, nothing but Brahman. Huh? And forever in the future, you will remain Brahman. So all of this is really just about recognizing it, just getting the idea into your head that I am Brahman. Oh, I really am Brahman. Oh, what do you know? As soon as you fully believe it, you instantly get the full result. That's self-realization. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.